Hello my friends, uh, I thought this day is never gonna happen, but here we are. Um, back at the time when I mm, shot my very popular uh, Google Home Mini tear down video, uh, people, some people requested to tear down also a power uh, brick or power ward or wall ward or power supply from of Google Home Mini. And I said like, I mean, I may do it, but it, because it's a, a sealed unit, it is a, like, I mean, I decided not to. But opportunity presented itself when uh, accident, a little accident happened. So I had my uh, backpack with full of electronics like two uh, power supplies like that, a phone and uh, two battery packs and water bottle. So water bottle uh, lead came loose and actually flooded all inside the power supply. This is the stupidest thing happened to me. But here we are, it's reality on the ground. So uh, phone, I didn't even know if it's still operational, it's still drying. I tried to dry it out in um, uh, this account. But two power ward are not operational. This is somewhat operational, other one is not working at all. So I decided, well, if this is the case, let's just pop it open and see what's happening to it and maybe we can fix it or yeah. Anyway, so long story short, here we are. I uh, tried to disassemble this um, uh, Google Home Mini power, power, um, uh, power, whatever it is, power supply. So it's, uh, mini micro USB power supply. It's pretty decent power supply and I why I took it with me because it, uh, it charges phones very well so I just decided to like use it instead of like uh, using regular dinky ones I have. So and works very well. I was really upset when it got all flooded. Um, it's very... Uh, it looked like it's pretty sealed unit but actually it still it had quite a bit of water inside. It was kind of... you can, <laughs> yeah it was quite a bit of a, a flood down there. So uh, it took me some time to actually crack it open. I did crack it open. So what I've done first. I thought um, I can melt or uh, uh, I was hoping it's glued, okay, first of all. And I th uh, hoped I can melt the glue with WD-40. So it didn't happen. So then WD-40 did not do anything to it. Well, but maybe displaced water inside or something like that. So I prompted to mechanical force. So I found this gap over here and I was poking the little screwdriver like all over along the perimeter and kind of tried to breaking the loose, uh, breaking the glue loose. It did not really help much, but because I started um, damaging the uh, outer shell. Uh, then I decided to hit it with the heat gun, but again, it made plastic very soft and didn't do much with the glue. And I, when it's soft, I couldn't really uh, grab uh, or grip the, the surface. So then I opted to other uh, means of opening. It's this. So uh, while losing the, the, the glue with the screwdriver, I, I think I did, I started hammering this like this on the perimeter as well all around and you know what it actually helped quite a bit so then i was just able to uh, pop it open so i already opened it just uh, you know i don't want to open it on the camera it's called it was a really really long process so here we are this is how google home mini power supply or use micro micro usb power supply looks inside Okay, so what do we see? This wire, how do I... Oh my, oh, oh look at this. They, they even thought about that. Look, turned out to be wire is actually connected with the connector to the board. This is really, really smart. Probably aids in assembly big times. We can just try to disconnect it. Oh, sweet. This is so smart. Look at this. This is so smart. Love this construction. It looks like a bit modular here. So what we have here, we have a primary transformer. This is probably some sort of secondary transformer. Few capacitors. Here is protection mod. Uh, is this a fuse? Looks like that's the fuse. To what? To what fuse? That's to what? Uh, 110 volts. Okay. Uh, fuse, not sure where the, how, I'm not sure how these guys are connected yet. Uh, I'll try to lift this board. There is one unpopulated capacitor over here. Not much going on here, so probably all active components are under other, in, in the bottom. Uh, let's see if I would be able to, I hope it's not glued or anything like that. I uh, hope I will be able to pop it. 
You want to damage under anything underneath. There are some clips over here which I tried to lift and I think it's going. Alright. Oh, here we are. Oh, that's how it's... Well, I'll, oh, look at this. WD-40 is everywhere. I have to clean this shit. So here is some um, insulator which insulates all this wire, uh, all these contacts from the rest of the board, which is nice done like that. And this is the most amazing, like, I mean, it's quite modular and I like it a lot. So what they've done, they, those two tops are actually connecting to tops over here on the, on the board, just like that. And Bob said, uncle, this is very nice. What the hell is that? Is this like EMI protection of some sort or shielding, sorry? Yeah, it's like, it's like, a looks like a coil, but like, looks like a, some sh shielding of some sort it's really really nicely done so if this is shielding to kind of protect uh, uh, from um, electromagnetic radiation from these modules they've done a good job because they solder this to i guess ground of some sort i mean there is no ground here there's no three pins uh, but there is no ground uh, pin on a on the power supply itself but Oh, love it. And look at this insulation stuff. So this is plastic covers all that to uh, prevent some mains leakage into the board and obviously subsequently maybe uh, into the uh, wire. And look at this insulation stuff. Like, so it completely insulates a secondary. I guess this is secondary part from primary. And obviously there is a, not just this uh, wall. It's also looks like it's a cutout. Yeah, look at this. It's actually whole assembly like that. So I guess in order to see what underneath you have to unsolder this guy. But from the first glance, what we have here, we have some chippy over here, another over here, and some few diodes down there. And looks like, looks like it's the... This guy is a bridge rectifier. That's pretty much it. There's no more active components. So let's let me zoom in a little bit more and s let's see. Okay. Uh, so I guess I would have to unsolder uh, this thing quickly. I'll be back. Okay, it's desoldered and let me pull it out. Okay, look at this. It's obviously again all everything covered in gunk from WD-40. Meh, ugh, slippery stuff. So we have a bunch of active components over here. Uh, I see some unpopulated stuff like the capacitor I mentioned before. Two chips. Um, yeah, some even more. Oh, look at this. I'm not sure if you would be able to actually see properly. Look at those spire gaps over here. It's uh, between that mauve. And here is more spark gaps in between the this transformer. So I don't know which one is primary, which is secondary. Okay, it was soldered to this part over here, to this pod, I mean. And um, so, what else is interesting in this particular board? Oh, look at this! There are some names: MP2EE, MP2 Vincent Young, MPME Chosen. Wow, that's some names here. It's amazing. It's like a Easter egg or something. <laughs> oh, look at this. I also found a this guy over here is NTC. Probably it's a thermistor, which is really, really good. So this has thermal protection as well, which is uh, really smart. So I cannot tell much more about construction of this guy. Uh, let's me see what are those two cheap chips are because i mean um have no uh, idea from like from what it's just uh from just from look for uh, uh, on those so i don't know what are they let me take a look so i have take a look uh what are those chips are and i have no idea what are they the only thing is i could uh, obviously easily find out is abs 20m it's 2 amp 1000 volt bridge rectifier diode that's it what are those jobbies are? Uh, 34, uh, uh, 34309C is this guy and 37851A is this guy. N have no idea. If you guys have, this is other like MPG1, if you have an idea what the hell are those are. Is this some sort of custom jobbies or this is some sort of Chinese off the shelf 
uh, clones. I don't believe Google would use that, but who knows? You know, these days, if you want to make a, a products as cheap as possible, you can do whatever. But here we are. Uh, those are two things which I have no idea what are they. I couldn't find. So if you find anything, please let me know. Um, that's pretty much it I can tell. This is very interesting, by the way. It's probably some sort of feedback, uh, something to to mention. So there are two tabs going through the PCB on this side, and they just one loop in this transformer. So it's kind of interesting. Probably some sort of feedback because here are the pins of transformer one. Let me see. Yeah, this transformer has many pins. One, two, three, four, and uh, one. Is it? Yeah, yeah, and three over here, and this feedback loop. So this seems like a little bit more complicated than usual power supply uh, uh, modules, which I see in other uh, like uh, power bricks like that, power wards. And has only two tops over here. It's probably just power. It's not utilizing all four in order to push more power through, so we don't doesn't need to. But here we are. So, uh, the only thing we just left to put it all together and see if it operates, because if it doesn't operate, I don't even th think I can actually do much about it, uh, because I have no idea what are those chips are, if I can, if any of them are, is dead or not. So, any, uh, the only thing I can do is just clean it up from WD-40 to see if there's any signs of corrosion. It looks like, uh, to, to double check, probably a protection, like fuse, and well, looks, like, looks like they are fine, but still double check the fusing and then things like that. If it's not working, unfortunately, it's gonna be garbage. Maybe I'll pull some parts out of it here. Some don't know what this capacitor is here. Some kind of any, any good brand or anything. Elite. So capacitors are of elite brand. Yeah, I don't know what kind of elite brand is that. So, anyways, uh, also I'm gonna take some shots, uh, high res photos of this uh, power brick and power supply, and anyone can actually go there and analyze whatever you can analyze. Obviously, won't be able to analyze too much because all this covered in uh, quite beefy components you don't really know how traces are coming underneath so yeah here we are please if you have any kind of idea what are those component components are those two chips please comment in the description okay uh, let me put it all together and see if it works okay looks like there is no sparks Ooh. and i do have drock my favorite um power bank tester but it and can also take some um micro usbs and let's see what's gonna happen now okay there is some something happening all right 506 volts well in order to actually see what this thing is well if it's actually function to its capacity we're gonna crank up some current all the way to whatever let's say two amps 1.82 amps, 5.2 volts. Yeah, that's pretty decent. Let's go up. 2.3, 2.42, 2 2.5. Wow, that's doing well. 2.6 amps. 2.7. Okay, shut down. Okay, so this thing can put out 2.7 amps roughly oops wrong way and this is amazing actually uh, I think we have a success I think I recovered this little poor guy from the dead bed and it's uh, functioning I'm not gonna seal it just now I'm gonna you know make sure it actually operates uh, a long time and then in long term and then I'm gonna just glue it back together uh, to make sure it's all sealed nicely because right now it's very dangerous actually you can just pull the whole thing and uh, I'm gonna just nicely detach it just like that okay so here we are two in one um, Google Home Mini power supply tear down and well repair or clean up inside so hope you guys like this video if you like and want to see something more like that please uh, subscribe and see you next time